Previously on Fresh Topo Reacts! They're so light on their feet. Like, for having to go solo with these weighted bases, for them to come back up as quickly as they do, great job. I am loving this concept! What? <laughs> Looks like they're working, they're working with contortionists too? To my orbit and fearless fam, you already know what's on deck. We got our queens, Brave Girls and Luna, with their Queendom 2 dance performance. I can't wait to get into it. Now, if you came from my other video where I reacted to the Kepler, Vivi's, Heelin, which is Sunny Dance performance, welcome back. If you're brand new and you want to check out those other performances, link in the description down below. But uh, yeah, if you're new to me to my channel, the game plan is I'm gonna be reacting to these performances twice. One time through where I'm just basically reacting, fanboying. The second time through where I will be pausing, talking about things I loved, maybe things I didn't love, and uh, providing a grade based on a one through 10 scale, pulling from my years of experience as a former competitive dancer, former dance judge, and former dance instructor. Now understand every single dancer, especially depending on the culture you come from, the discipline you came from, is going to view and appreciate dance differently. What I may love about a piece, another dancer may not be a fan of, but besides all that, we all love dance, right? And when you mix K-pop with dance, it's nothing but a good time, all right? We're all about that life. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good time, all right? It's gonna be a great, great time. Now, the first two stages that I reacted to, they were insane, all right? The lowest, I'm t spoiler alert, the lowest grade is like an 8.2, which is a great grade. 8.2 out of 10, that was the lowest from the first two that went. So uh, yeah, the bar isn't set pretty high, but I have extremely, extremely high expectations from this last performance. I mean, they say you save the best for last, right? So uh, yeah, I think we're I think we're on for a show. And the ladies did win first place in the mid performance review. I think is what they were calling it. But the mid performance viewing of all the other contestants. So uh, I think that that bodes well for this final piece, especially since they'll have time to train. Now I haven't seen the episode yet, so I'm going straight into this performance video. But uh, I've no doubt, I've no doubt that uh, what we saw last week's episode has been sharpened to a razor's edge and we are going to get a great 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 performance all right the bar has been set high like i said last two performances the lowest of those two was an 8.2 out of 10 which is a great grade so uh they've got their work cut out for them but i have no doubt it's gonna be a killer performance so without further ado let's get into it and here we go the last performance and uh yeah i'm i'm excited but like nervous too because obviously i'm in orbit so i want Luna to do well and i really don't want to see brave girls get eliminated so i'm like Come on, bring it, ladies, bring it. I'm sure they will. Hey, you know what? Oh, the camera work, the way they set the mood right there, going black and white. Oh, God. Look at her extension on the pants. Oh my god. I have, I have chills. <laughs> oh, I love how they're playing off each other right now. We're like barely into this, but it's like a masterclass on musicality. Like, we've been teased that for like so long now, but oh my god. Oh, love that. Love with Ice on Heja. Just perfect. Oh, I love these little slight pauses as he make these hits. Look at Yerim! Oh my god, that was gorgeous to have Oh, let's go, MG. Look at her. Oh. Oh my God. This is so beautiful. The way they're working on textures as well. Jesus. And Angie, that was into my soul. This like seductress like predator vibe, I love it. Like, 
the classy killer predator. Jeez. This execution is so That's the winner for me. That's the winner. Oh my god. I don't even need to see the full cam. I mean, I will see the full cam, but I don't even need to. That's the winner. <sighs> I was so nervous going into this, but why? Why did I need to be nervous? I mean, oh, I just... Oh my god. Like... Oh, like my brain is fried right now. That was... The execution, all right, like the musicality expressed by every single dancer. It's one thing, all right. It is one thing to know the choreo, to know the count, to apply your hits to that count. So in dance or in music, you have an eight count, all right. Music's all broken down into an eight count variant. In dance, you apply movements, hits, as we call, to each count along that or each hit along that count. It's one thing to know the choreo where you can apply your hits in a timely manner, but how do you go about executing? your expression, your body expressions, how you go about balancing yourself and you jump across that center line. <sighs> Musicality is through the roof with every single one of them. And I'm just, yo, I am like, <laughs> I was so nervous obviously because I'm, I'm, I'm like, I feel like I need Luna to do well. I want them to do well as an orbit, obviously I do. And watching Queendom, I have seriously fallen for Brave Girl so freaking, like, I love Brave Girl so much. <laughs> like, like, the members are incredible. Like, their personalities and their talents, I'm just like, I love them. <laughs> but they keep getting last place, you know? And that's to no fault of their own. Um, there have been some hiccups along the way with you know, in my opinion, with like stage design and production team, which hasn't helped them, you know, showcase the best version of them. Um, and I understand their fandom is domestic and small or mostly domestic and small. Um, so they keep getting last place. And I hate, hate, hate the rule that you get eliminated. I feel like the show, you shouldn't be eliminating them because it's showcased to the fans, I feel like. So to have the threat of an elimination and the thought of seeing Brave Girls get eliminated, that really... I feel like it bothered me more than it should. I'm not even, like, a fearless... I'm, not, I'm like, I'm not the point of, like, a stand yet, although I'm pretty sure I'm approaching that way. Um, the thought of that happening was just, like, such a freaking bummer. But we can throw that out the window now, because, oh my god, <laughs> like... This has got to be a first-class... Or, not for, a first-place performance. This has to be! Especially since we know they have dancers in the audience, all right? You cannot tell me, it doesn't matter what discipline you come from, you cannot tell me that you're sitting there as a dancer, someone with training in one aspect or another, and saw this piece and was like, it's not first place, you know? Like, throwing bias out the window, looking at it from a technical standpoint, there is no freaking way you're gonna look at this and be like, I felt like this, this wasn't first place, you know? Maybe if you are really big on the spectacle of a piece, you could say one of the other groups did better. Because one of the other groups, I won't spoil it, you know, check it out for yourself. But one of the other groups, the spectacle was absolutely there. The way they used so much of the stage, the way they had the props come in, the pyrotechnics, like that was a full-on spectacle. So in a way, if you are a dancer who likes to look at big picture spectacle aspect of a piece, then there's an argument to be said, okay, maybe that's the first place. But from an individual technical standpoint, this is in. And I come from a hip-hop street background, all right? Like 20 years of hip-hop and street with informal training in modern dance, you know? Because when I became an instructor, I obviously worked alongside other dancers or instructors who had different disciplines. And, you know, in between classes, you know, they'd show me, they'd show me a thing or two, all right? You know? So just to see the technical aspect of this. And I have so much in my mind right now. I'm like, so like the little things from every single member where i'm just like i'm so proud of them you know like some members i figured would knock this out of the park you know it didn't matter what concept i mean 
honestly, most of the Luna members, I figured, wouldn't have an issue with this. And, Lindsay, like, when I actually did my research on her, because here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Right, we're going into story time, right? When this lineup was first announced, when it was first spoiled, before the episode aired, before we found out who was with whom, it was spoiled, and you found out who was in which group. There was a small subset, or maybe I was just on the wrong side of, like, Twitter. There's a, small, there's a subset that was, like, concerned. They're, like, not happy with the fact that Luna got paired up with Unji. And I was like, okay, bit bit negative <laughs> mindset with that regard, but let's see what we're working with here. So I looked at, you know, the fan cams of Brave Girls and focused in on Unji for the first stages. And admittedly, I wouldn't say I was concerned, but I was kind of like... With what they're having her do, she appears to be lacking from a technical standpoint, you know. And now that we know that she is a modern trained dancer, it makes sense as to why there were deficiencies seen based on the choreo she was put in, all right? Because what you see in the first Queendom stage with Unji was lack of extension, looking pretty heavy on her feet, looked like finding her center line was a bit difficult for her, but a lot of that had to do with the formation and the attire that she's in, and the fact that Brave Girl sings live, you know? There is a rule, there's something we call the rule of 80, all right? In music and dance performances, you have the rule of 80, meaning if you have to focus on engaging with the audience, if you have to focus on singing live, you're only going to commit yourself 80% towards your dance, all right? Some groups will go a bit further if they have the capability to do so, but others keep it at a safe 80. So looking at the first two Brave Girl stages, I was like, okay, she looks like a well-rounded dancer, but there are deficiencies. However, it makes sense now when you know her dance background, because in my years as a student, in my years as an instructor, the hardest transition for a dancer to make I've seen is when you have modern and contemporary dancers take on more grounded disciplines, things that are more weighted downstairs, things that apply more linear hits as opposed to free flowing movement. All right. So that's why you saw, and it's a natural deficiency. I have never come across a modern contemporary dancer who's able to pick up linear hits like that. All right. So deficiencies were there and i was like okay that's not to say that she won't be able to pick up the core especially when i found out that monica was attached to it because monica is a multi-discipline dancer multi-discipline choreographer but the pieces i've seen from her have been primarily linear hits heavy weighted hip-hop type vibe so i was like bro this is gonna be in a way i can understand the concern because luna is versed in linear weighted hits with unji's background in modern dance and from what I saw in the first two Queendom stages, I was like, she may struggle with this. Of course, let's go on me doing research now. I checked out some Brave Girls practices. I checked out her freestyle on the unit as well as like some, I believe I saw like a V-Live freestyle where I was like, all right. I felt like, <laughs> I felt like we literally have our trump card here. Like, every, like there's so much doubt, at least on that side of Twitter where I was on. And I was like, I don't think y'all realize, like, this, and she's a freaking monster, right? Like, and then when I found out that Monica was going, after watching the episode, when I found out Monica was going with a more, like, modern, like, concept, I was like, bro, this is it. <laughs> like, we literally have an ace here. Like, it's over. So, um, for weeks now, I have been so excited for this piece, all right? And, like, I just was, like, thinking to myself, like, all we need now is for the Luna members to grasp this concept, this approach, and they will. And then we have a masterpiece on our hands, and that's what they gave us, all right? So, oh my god. This was this was the perfect storm, all right? This was the absolute perfect storm, you know? Unji from the get-go knew her strength. She's a modern trained dancer, went straight for this song, straight for this choreo, and didn't leave. The Luna members would have preferred to do, you know, that something that they're strong in. Hip-hop heavy-weighted linear strikes. They're strong in that. They're well-versed in that. They didn't get it, but it worked out perfectly because they're such well, they're such great dancers with such strong foundations. They were able to pick it up, being led by Unji, who is, you know, formally trained in modern and contemporary dance. Like, and then you have Monica. All right. This, 
the perfect storm to give us this. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm sorry. I went on a bit of a tangent there, but I just feel like there is so much in my mind going on and I gotta, I had to let it out. Uh, which is a good thing why this video is split into two. Otherwise, my if I combined it with the first two performances, this video would be super long. But anyways, moving on to the full cam performance and then afterwards, I'll provide a grade. But for sure, this is in the low to mid nines, all right, which would make it, without spoiling, what competing for first place so anyways uh yeah let me pull the full cam and then after the full cam i'll get into the uh the the final grade and the recap on everything all right here we go full cam performance and after that first viewing definitely sitting at a low to mid nine look at that execution right there look at the extension look at how she's working her center line and controlling her limbs Unbelievable. I'm so, so proud of Baby Wolf. And I seriously, I love how they're playing off each other so much. Like between, like, when Heijo had her solo, you just had Heijin and Benji just working on each other. Right now, working on each other, striking these poses. It's beautiful. Like the whole aesthetic of this entire stage. Like, for sure, giving you that Cincy vibe. I love that. I love that. We've been teased that for so long now, but to see it. Right now, too, I love the level of the ISO. Hey, Joe Santo, everyone going low. But they're not just going low for the sake of going low. There is a full-on routine as they go low right there, right? Working levels. That's such a Monica thing to do, is to, like, implement not only the artistic side of dance which you clearly see here the artistic side relies so much on the individual dancers being able to execute and really embrace the concept embrace the mood but you also have this science of dance when you have level works being applied when you work levels when you change level plane meaning you have low like floor work or floor routine when you have lifts when you have aerials these changes in level plane what they do to the eyes they create a tunnel effect drawing you in on what's going in it keeps the viewers engaged with trickery of the eyes the science of dance so of course monica would implement level work and to, to do it so well not just level not just level work for the sake of level work but like actually having a dedicated routine for everyone who's down low Love it. And that's uh, stopping on dime right there. They do that so freaking well. These flowing changes in tempo and then boom, stop it. I love it. This is so difficult to do, alright? Any dancer will tell you being able to change tempo like this, especially being able to change tempo like this, especially when you are having movements across count. Cause you have choreo where it's pretty linear and you can have movement per count. So you know, you have dance broken down, or you have music broken down, eight count bearing, you have dance applied hits to each of those counts, or each of those numbers within the count, right? When you have free-flowing modern type dance, you have movements across counts. So instead of like one, two, three, four, you have one, two, three, four. And then you're also playing with the tempo, so the pace in which you go across counts. So for them to go at one tempo and then just sweep away at another tempo and then to stop on a dime like that, so difficult. So killed it. Clean execution. Look at this. Like these pictures they're painting are freaking gorgeous. Unji taking point, the leader that she is. Love it. Cannon and off, so another concept. Cannons, repetition and movement. People love to see that. But yo, the textures throughout. Textures is when you apply, think of it as you being underwater. Right, think of it as you being underwater and trying to move. You have that resistance, that water pressing up against you. When you apply textures to your dance, you're taking that resistance movement from water onto land, and they're just doing it flowing throughout this piece so freaking well. Like all of them, the members and the dance crew. Balance too. Looking at their center line, just the way they like hop back and forth. Precision. And the formation as a whole, just. And this solo right here. Oh my god. It, on the backdrop of them flowing and working textures, kind of oozing back and forth there. As Miss Hasu Young. That is not E. When she kills like this, that is Miss Hasu Young, alright? Dance Queen of the Fourth Gen.
that's a 9.6. 9.6 out of 10 for me. Which is the highest I've ever given any Queen Num performance. Just, it was such a clean performance. The concept as well, the seductive, almost predator type vibe to it. You know, um, just for them to buy into this mindset. All right, because when you are a dancer, you're not just going up there and hitting movements, right? We play a character. You have a story to tell and a character that you play within that story. And every single member bought into their character. This predator type vibe. I'm actually curious. I haven't seen the episode yet, so I don't know the full extent of to like what concept they were truly pushing for. But I just feel like the vibe I was getting based on their eyes, based on their body language, based on just the the ambiance I was set up by the stage design. I just feel like like killer predator was the vibe I was like seductress predator, like a black widow type deal. Um, you know, and the black and red outfits as well did that for me. Uh, <laughs> But the fact that the members bought into this concept, bought into their character so freaking well, that we saw a side to the Luna members that I haven't seen since, not, not to this extent, this level of seduction, but I mean, we got a glimpse of it a few years back with the, with their cover, with the Sunmi cover, which they did for Halloween. Um, but this was just, this is another level. And the technical execution that, I can't, it's, I can't express how difficult it is to do what they just did. Um, and to just buy the entire pack, just to buy into the concept. And the dance crew was incredible as well. The level design was, was unbelievable. The way they worked the leveled ISO, the way that they would set up the backdrop to have the, the crew behind Eve as she had her solo piece as they flowed across the texture. And another thing, technical execution of texture work. All right? Just... <sighs> I've seen a lot of good dance performances from idols, and this is definitely toward the top, all right? 9.6 out of 10 for me. Um, so to recap, that puts them in first place, all right? You have this performance of Unji with Brave Girls with a 9.6 out of 10 in first place. Um, and if you haven't seen the reaction, the other performances, go check it out now, because I'm about to spoil it. In second place, you had a 9.0 with Hewlin and Woja Sunyoung. The reason being is I just the spectacle was insane, all right? The moments of dance technicality were, in, were very clean, but for the most part, I felt there was a lot of gesturing centered around and crazy, like centered around unbelievable framing, all right? The frames were gorgeous. The spectacle was gorgeous. So that's why I brought it up to a 9.0. It could have been higher than 9.0 had there been a bit more dance technicality from the members because there there were mo there were extended moments where it was just a lot of gesturing, which is nothing wrong with that. But looking at it from like a dance like this is a dance competition, these are dance performances. I can't go any higher than a 9.0. You know if if you know the level of difficulty for dance technicality is capped out at a certain area, despite the fact that the spectacle is so freaking high. So, yeah, Woja Sung and Heelin, second place with a 9.0, and in third place was an 8.2 out of 10 for VVs and Kepler. And in that piece, dance technicality was on point, but I felt like it was lacking the spectacle. You know, the ambiance wasn't so much there. I mean, they had the eyes in the back, which was cool, but I feel like the way that the, 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 the dance crew was set up was a bit lackluster. You know, they had them either backline or they had them distinct frames mimicking the center formation. I feel like had they gone with like offset, meaning like doing different type of movements to frame, it would have drawn you better in, or it would have done a better job of drawing you into the center crew, which is why, you know, that the VVs and Kepler performance was an 8.2, which is still a great grade. Like anything above an eight is basically a performance I'm gonna come back to a second, third, fourth time to watch because it was that good. So um, yeah, outstanding performances from every single one of these queens. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel truly blessed, you know? <laughs> I feel truly blessed to have witnessed this, and uh, yeah, I'm just so happy. <sighs> I really hope, and I gotta believe, that this is first place. Especially, the hope is that because there are so many dancers in the audience as well, that they would try to take an unbiased approach and be like, from a technical standpoint, that's the one, this is the one. Um, so yeah, I expect I expect the dance aspect, the dance performance, to be first place, which should hopefully get Luna further up the rankings and also help Brave Girls avoid elimination because, like I said, I hate the elimination concept. It's so freaking stupid to me. Um, like, 
I feel like this should be let there be like a fun punishment, you know, like they have to do like something overly adorable or something they don't like to do, but like to eliminate them, that's like heartbreaking stuff to be eliminated, all right? Especially when so many fans love and adore you. Like that's I don't like it at all. But there's a lot about Emnet that I don't like, so anyway, that's another story. But anyways, thank you so much for checking out, you guys. If you like me, see, please hit that like button. If you like some more, subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, recommendations, please leave them down below. Otherwise, I will see you in another video, maybe. Maybe see you next week for the next Queendom reaction. Um, but yeah, wherever you're at, take care, be happy, be healthy, and yeah, have a great rest of your week. Take it easy.